In this physcast, we're asked to calculate how much helium is required to lift a balloon, which carries two people. We're told that the total mass of the people, the basket and the balloon is 280 kilograms, and it is highlighted that we're not told the mass of the gas. So one way of describing the amount of helium that we would need is to work out the mass of the helium. To interpret the problem, we need to understand that for the helium to lift the balloon, really what we're asking is that the balloon has neutral buoyancy. That is, that the balloon isn't rising, doesn't have a net acceleration upwards or a net acceleration downwards, isn't sinking. So that means that the net force acting on the balloon is going to be equal to zero. And that's going to be given by a buoyant force, which acts upwards, plus a weight force, which acts downwards. So when the sum of those two forces is zero, when the buoyant force balances the weight force, then the balloon will just sit stationary. Uh, we need to recall, of course, that the buoyant force, by definition, is given by the weight of the displaced fluid. And if we want to calculate the buoyant force, that's given by the density of the fluid, so the density of the air, which is in the atmosphere, times by the volume that the is displaced, which is given by the volume of the balloon, times by gravity. To put this in context, let's develop the problem a little bit further. I'm going to have a balloon with some volume that I don't know, and it's supporting a basket with some people inside. Really, I can think of that as a free body diagram, where I know that the uh, mass of the balloon plus the mass of the people plus the mass of the basket little b uh, uh, multiplied by g is the weight force acting downwards we might actually collectively call that big m which we're given 280 kilograms and that there is a buoyant force acting upwards which in this case is given by the density of the air times the volume of the balloon times g. Now you'll notice I've drawn the buoyant force upwards larger than the weight force downwards because I also need to take into account that the helium which occupies the uh, volume of the balloon has some mass and we want to find that so we might as well put in the weight force for it, mass of helium times gravity and there is a um, another buoyant force of course that I'm not putting in it's a very, very small buoyant force, so I'm going to be ignoring it, but essentially you know, the people displace some air and the basket displaces some air. We don't know any information about that, uh, but I think we can assume that the volume of the persons and the basket is very small compared to the, the volume of the balloon, so I'm going to ignore that buoyant force. So that's, a, that's an, a, an assumption that I'm pretty happy to make. Okay, so a little bit of information that I need. Um, I need to look at uh, finding out the density of air. Um, I'm not given that, but I can look at a data sheet which is provided. 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed. So I get that from my data sheet. Uh, and the density of helium we are actually given. So in this case, 0 0.18 kilograms per meter cubed. So to evaluate this problem, I just need to write down Newton's second law. So the net force here is going to be equal to, well, I need to choose a direction. So let's take upwards as being positive for now. Uh, so the buoyant force is the density of air times the volume times G uh, minus, we've, we've got the weight force from the people, the balloon and the basket acting downwards and we've got the weight of the helium acting downwards again and the sum of those forces are zero. So we can see this simplifies because g is a common factor so we can cancel the acceleration of gravity out and that leaves us with an equation where we've got two unknowns. So we don't know the volume, that's an unknown, and we don't know the mass of helium. So we want to find out what those two things are. Luckily, what we do know, however, is that the volume is occupied completely by helium. So we can replace the mass of helium by 
the density of helium times volume because density times volume is equivalent to mass and so what that does is it takes our equation which had two unknowns and it replaces it with an equation which has basically got one unknown now you might think that hey now I can calculate the volume of the helium I'm asked how much helium do I need well one way of describing the amount of helium you need is the mass another way you could describe is the is the volume that the helium occupies so the equally valid uh, responses but importantly here we've only got one unknown so we want to solve the unknown which is the volume let's collect the volume as a common factor so it's density of air minus the density of helium and we'll take the mass across to the other side and then we want to solve for the volume so the volume is going to be equal to the mass divided by the difference in those densities the density of air minus the density of helium so we've got a symbolic equation we can put in our values we've got 280 um, kilograms on the top divided by my density of air 1.29 minus the density of helium 0 0.18 and the units there are going to be kilograms per meter cubed so you can see that the kilograms are going to cancel and we end up with a volume in meters cubed and if we plug that into our calculator we find that the volume is equal to 252 meters cubed so there's our answer 252 meters cubed of helium uh, if I wanted to work out the mass of helium of course um, I could uh, take that volume and I could multiply by the density of helium and that would give me the mass of helium which works out to be 45 kilograms so that's our answer for part a over 252 meters cubed or 45 kilograms of helium for part B we're asked to repeat the calculation for a hot air balloon now not a helium balloon um, and the air density inside the hot balloon is 10% less than that of the surrounding atmosphere so the density of the air the density of the hot air is 90% of the density of air so rather than draw a diagram we can skip straight to the evaluation stage so once again the net force is going to be zero it's going to be the sum of the forces I'll have a buoyant force by the surrounding fluid so it's a density of air times the volume it's a different volume from beforehand so we we'll just call it V prime uh, times gravity the uh, weight of the people, the basket and the balloon is the same uh, but now rather than helium we've got the weight of the hot air so I could write that as the mass of hot air times gravity like at the top here rather than that I'll write that as the density of hot air times the volume times gravity which is really 90% um, of the density of air uh, times the volume times gravity and the sum of those are going to be zero uh, so once again uh, G drops out you can uh, collect uh, V prime as a common factor so we have the density of air minus 0 0.9 the density of air is equal to the mass or finally the volume we're trying to find is the mass divided by well, 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1 the density of air so 2, 280 divided by 0 0.1 is 2,800 uh, divided by 1.29 so that ends up being our calculator 2,170 meters cubed um, so I'll just assess this so if you look in the back of the book for this particular problem you'll notice that uh, the answers here are slightly off so 49 kilograms and 2,500 meters cubed um, it turns out that's because the author may have used a slightly different density of air um, scouring a textbook I find they have the density of air in a problem as being approximately 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed so that explains the discrepancy why is the volume for the hot air balloon that much larger almost an order of magnitude larger than the volume for a helium balloon uh, because of course the mass of the helium is so much less than the mass of the hot air uh, so the, the buoyant force really um, has to support mo for the hot air balloon has to support mostly the weight of the hot air not really the basket so that's uh, rather interesting